this is a good place to consider a, a, a major interpretational issue and theological issue that comes up very strongly here in the book of Revelation. Who are the victors? Who are the victors? Who are the overcomers? Who are the, the nikon, the winners that are promised here? They're promised to eat from the tree of life. There's other promises. Each letter has promises to these victors. Who are they? Well, there's three ways to approach this interpretation question. There's three, there are three theological frameworks in which people approach this question. One theological framework holds to, the doc, holds to the, a doctrine called perseverance. Now, I believe in eternal security, once saved, always saved, okay? but perseverance is a little bit different, significantly different, not just a little different, significantly different. Perseverance is the doctrine that all true believers, anyone who's really born again, anyone who's really regenerate, anyone who has really believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, will, must and will persevere in good works until they die. It's called perseverance. It's not that God will persevere in saving you. It's that the believer must and will persevere in good works. This leads to the problem that if you have someone that seems to be a believer, but they're stuck in sin, and they're stuck too long, of course, I don't have to define how long too long is or how serious the sin is, that's their problem, <laughs> but then they're not really believers because they didn't really have what they call, what these people call saving faith. They have what these people call mere intellectual assent, which I don't accept those expressions, but I'm just telling you about this theological point of view. If you want to learn more about the doctrine of perseverance, really you should ask people that hold to the doctrine of perseverance. Don't let me be the only one who explains perseverance to you. But that's a rough idea. Okay. A second theological framework is the, idea, is the theological framework in which we can lose our salvation. If we sin enough, we will lose our salvation. So according to the perseverance view, all true Christians are victors because they all will persevere in good works. And so all true Christians get to eat from the tree of life because, they're, because they, if you are a true believer, you will return to your first love. You won't stay in the sin of uh, lacking, not having love for the Lord. And according to the view that you can lose your salvation. Now again, I'm not, I don't hold that view, and you should ask someone who holds that view for more specifics and more accurate presentation of their view, but probably they would say that if you keep sinning, in this case you've left your first love, in other cases their sexual immorality and other problems, you will eventually somehow lose your salvation. So for those people too, all Christians that end up Christians at the end of their life and have not lost their salvation, they are all victors, and there's no non-victors, okay? But the problem with either of those views is they don't allow for the concept of carnal Christian that Paul develops in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. In 1 Corinthians 11.30, we read that Paul says, On account of that, many among you are weak and sick, and quite a few have fallen asleep. Now, falling asleep here clearly means they died. So you have sinful believers there in Corinth that were taking the Lord, in the context of that passage, taking the Lord's Supper inappropriately, and they died for it. They died in their sin. Now, the perseverance view would have to say they were never really Christians, because if you were really a Christian, you wouldn't continue in this sin and die in it. But 
does seem like many among you that were taking the Lord's Supper just did it wrong with a bad heart, and they died. God's judgment was they died. The whole discussion about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 about uh, building with upon the foundation with wood, hay, and stubble, or gold and silver and precious stones, is also very important in this. The one who builds with gold, silver, and precious stones will be rewarded. The one who builds with wood, hay, and stubble will be saved, but as though through fire. There in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul develops the concept very strongly of the carnal believer. This person has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, but he's slipped into fleshliness or worldliness. In effect, the church in Ephesus, despite their hard work, despite their sound doctrine, they had slipped into a fleshliness, a carnality of not loving the Lord the way they should. So, I mentioned that there were two views. One is called the perseverance view. The other is the view that you can lose your salvation. My view is neither of those. My view is that once you're saved, you're permanently saved eternally, but you can lose your rewards. And eating from the tree of life is a reward for faithful Christian living. I think there are three kinds of humanity in the world today. There are unbelievers. We know what their final place will be, the lake of fire. There are overcoming overcoming believers, victors, believers that are victors, believers that, in this case of the Ephesus church, that, that return to their first love and will be rewarded in the kingdom of God forever. And there are also believers that are believers, born again, justified, sealed by the Holy Spirit, give, granted eternal life, but they didn't grow spiritually. They slipped. They, they never remembered from whence they had fallen, and they lost their reward. They didn't, they, unless these Ephesians repent, they lose their reward, but they don't lose their salvation. So that's my understanding. One doesn't, people that actually have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, believed on Him, never lose their salvation. Rewards can be taken from us. Later in this section, we'll read, hold on to what you have so that no one takes your crown. It doesn't say hold on to what you have so that no one takes your salvation. It says hold on to what you have so that no one takes your crown, which is one of the rewards in this section. In 2.10, we see, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. And in 2.26, we read, To the victor who keeps my deeds to the end, I will give authority over the nations. In that passage, the victor is defined as the one who keeps the Lord's deeds until the end. And that kind of believer, Christian believer, gets the reward of authority over the nations. So my understanding is that there are three kinds of humanity. Yes, unbelievers, but believers are divided into two groups. The overcomers, they are faithful unto death. Be faithful unto death, and I'll give you the crown of life. Hold on to what you have so that no one takes your crown. And in the case of the Ephesians, they need to repent and go back to that first love, and they get to eat from the tree of life. Believers that are faithful are to be rewarded in the kingdom, and believers that are sli that slip, that remember from whence you've fallen, that f fall into some kind of a carnal state, they don't lose their salvation, but they lose their eternal reward. And I think that's an important theme to keep watching out for as we move through the book of Revelation.